So yeah, just a quick video while I'm out in the car today. Um, a, a topic that has been widely talked about online sort of the last two, three, four days. Something I flagged up last season and I was reluctant to make a video on it because I'm always one for not, you know, for, for, for getting behind the players. I am not. I don't agree with slating players all the time or calling for them to be dropped or got rid of or whatever. And, you know, I've even defended Joe Linton in, 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 some, in some cases. So I, I was, two or three times I made a video, but I didn't put it out because I thought, you know, come on. But Jamal LaSalle's, yeah, I think it's something that we need to talk about because he has been had a starting place for for, for what this is It'll be one two three uh, this will be the fifth season now. Um, I think he's a good player on his on his day. He is a good centre back. He's not a modern centre back. He's not a particularly good passer, but he does read the game pretty well usually, which is also going to sound like a bit of a joke because of the Brighton performance was horrendous. But, um, yeah, he, he's not particularly a good pass. He's not an elegant sort of Fabian Scher type of player, but he's a strong commanding centre-back. And, you know, he's an old-school centre-back. He heads the ball well. He's fierce in the tackle. You know, he'll block shots, get in the way. You know, like a, a N Nemanja Vidic. If Fabian Scher was Rio, he's the, he's the Vidic. And usually whoever's paired next to him is a bit more um, of an elegant centre-back. But at times last season and this season against Brighton, he I feel he got exposed as not being the centre-back that we thought he was. Um, the game that sticks out mostly to me it was West Brom in the Cup when I forget the name of the guy and I apologise to him. And West Brom for at first, but um, the striker they brought on with 20 25 minutes to go, and he completely changed the game and he dominated Jamal. And Jamal, I wouldn't want to say looked afraid of him, but he, he he bullied him and he battered him from pillar to post. Now, when you're a centre back, he's not blessed with pace, he's not a particularly skillful ball playing centre back. Your main strengths are physicality, your presence, being strong in the tackle, and yeah, physicality and strength. And he just got bullied. Now, against Brighton, he got exposed as having no clue where he's meant to be. He got ran rings round. You know, you look at the, the build-up for the third goal. Oh, my God. I, I think I've seen a, some graphics where the other three defenders are in pretty in a pretty good line. And he is just playing um, their number seven. I forget his name now. Connolly? Donnelly? Um, good player anyway, um, playing him on side by about half a mile. And I'm not saying he should be dropped as captain. I believe he should play tonight against Morecambe as a bit of a confidence boost. But we got to start thinking, Fabian Scher is still not fit. Federico Fernandez, all right, he had an off game against Brighton, but last season he pretty much um, proved himself to be rely our most reliable centre-back. Is it time to give Fernandes and Kieran Clark a go? Kieran Clark's been very unlucky with injuries. Florian Lejeune has dipped and he is therefore gone for the time being. Um, Paul Dummett. I'm a big fan of Paul Dummett. Is he better than Jamal Lascelles? At the moment, you have to say yes, but he's been injured for a long time. So I wouldn't probably wouldn't start him against Spurs. Um... Jamal Russell, has he been given a free pass? Has he been given his starting place just because he's the captain? There are better centre-backs at the club, I feel. In the 17-18 season, alongside Florian Lejeune, I thought he was fantastic. I thought he was really, really, really good. Um, but now you've got to say his position has got to be under threat. It has to be. It has to be. Um, I, I don't like making these videos. I don't like talking like this because he's our captain and... Ever since that interview post the Southampton game in our in the relegation season, I've been so behind him because I love I love that sort of thing. What he stands for, you know, effort, determination. This isn't good enough, you know. When he had that bust up with Modiame because he wasn't putting the effort in training, I love all that. I really do. But I think it's much for his own good that he needs to come out the team for a little bit. Um, so. Just hypothetically, if he doesn't play against Tottenham, 
who should be the captain. Um, obviously, the vice captains, John Joe Shelby, Matt Ritchie. Um, I don't think Matt Ritchie will be starting the game against Spurs. John Joe, he's been getting a lot of stick online as well for his performance in the Brighton game. But I think he's a viable vice captain. Or a viable, you know, standing captain being the vice captain. Um, Fernandez or Kieran Clark. We shall see. Um, so, yeah, comment below if you completely dif disagree with me, if you agree with me, whatever. Um, yeah, this is not a dig at Jamal LaSalle. So I'm just saying, he's. Um, is he being exposed as someone who thrived under Rafa's guidance? Rafa's obviously a very famous, very accomplished defensive coach. Obviously, look at his time with Valencia, Napoli, Liverpool, you know, very defensive. With our, um, you know, his, his time with us, we weren't very good to watch at times, but we had a good defence, particularly in the 17, 18, 18, 19, 19 seasons. Um, so is it a coincidence that he's just fallen away? Um, his standards have dropped since Rafa's gone without Rafa's guidance and tutelage. Time will tell. Um, obviously, support for Jamal LaSalle's 100% behind him, but I think he just he could do with being taken out of the firing line for a bit and just make him fight for his place. Anyway, what do you reckon?